like to request the author, Professor Ramesh, to give us an overview of the book. Thank you, Sujata. The book focuses on the renaissance of photoelasticity in the recent uh, years. Digital photoelasticity advocates use of a generic polariscope, and this book recommends a 10-step method to evaluate the total fringe order and isoclinics. Usually, the researchers post-process these in a cumbersome manner for comparison with the numerical model. This book advocates a simpler approach by post-processing the results of a numerical model to get the total fringe order and isoclinics. With developments in digital photoelasticity, the book also advocates the use of a conventional polariscope with four steps to get total fringe order and isoclinic. On the other hand, use of a conventional circle polariscope with just one image for total fringe order evaluation, useful for solving time varying phenomena. So the message in the book is, institutions that have the polariscopes can rejuvenate to digital photoelasticity with appropriate software rather than buying a generic polariscope at high cost. This shows an algorithm to find out the skeleton. This can be achieved from the software we have developed, the G-Photo. And this shows a complex fringe pattern where you have white dots show the skeleton. And this is a crack. One would like to evaluate the stress intensity factor from this data. This is achievable by our another software, PSIF. And what you can do is you can extract data from this experiment, which was shown as red dots. As the number of parameters are increased, the red dots closely with the simulated finch pattern. One of the applications of photoelasticity is in the development of jet engines. You have a dovetail joint. And when you look at a photoelastic picture, the joint stresses appear like this. In the contact zone, cracks can develop in service. They grow due to fatigue. One of these fringe patterns form the cover page of the book. We also have another software, PScope, for simulation using standard problems. This is for engineering education. One can also have carrier fringes in the simulation. Carrier fringes come in handy when you want to analyze a low birefringent material like glass. The carrier fringes augment the photoelastic information. You will be able to extract the data better, not only in the visual field, but also in the infrared region, photoelasticity is applicable. This shows an example of a 3D electronic packaging with several stacks and a common throw silicon wire that moves through it for connectivity. The manufacture of this introduces stresses which can be easily obtained using phase shifting and the stresses are shown here. One can also with the white light regime, we have a software called DGTFP. Using this, we have analyzed problem of interacting cracks in an edge heated plate. It's a very challenging problem, time varying problem. And we have just recorded only one image and process this to get the stress intensity factor. Not only this, the book covers a wide range of applications from our group as well as groups working across the world. This shows for a simple water bottle, what kind of stresses developed at the bottom, at the rib region and at the neck. This example shows what happens in a chain in the colored fringe pattern, you have concentric circles. And in the black and white, you have a flowery pattern because of improper interference fit. Interference fit is not just hammering two mating components. In fact, the understanding developed in this study has helped an Indian industry to change their production line. Photography is also applicable for the analysis of seals. This came into prominence after the blast of Challenger. You have for the O-ring and various cross-sectional shapes, what kind of stresses that get developed. You all have a cell phone. It's 
Each of them have a camera. It's very cost effective, mainly because of precision glass molding without any further machining. The challenge here is the design of the mold and also optimizing that thermal cycle to minimize shrinkage as well as minimize stresses. The process is done in an enclosed environment. Heat transfer data is not possible to obtain. What is done here is the finished product is analyzed for residual retardation. This information is used to tweak the heat transfer properties such that the results match with the experiment. In fact, it is a very innovative approach, a game changer in precision glass molding. You also have interesting application on snake locomotion. Of course, people have used real snakes on uh, non-poisonous ones. This is on a gelatin sheet. You have a snake. The black regions show where the snake has lifted its body. This information is necessary to model its locomotion. And once this is understood, it can help to create snake robo to rescue people entrapped in a rubber. You also have another application where an epidural injection is uh, put what should be the shape of the needle, how the stresses develop as the needle is pierced in. You also have another interesting application. What happens when the roots interact with the soil? As the roots grow, stresses develop on the soil. You have a simulation with granules simulating the soil as time increases the roots grow, they interact, and you see fringe pattern appearing on the grains. This knowledge is very important for food security because the modern day equipment compresses the soil more, it sends out a distress signal for the plant not to grow. So what you find here is, this is the true renaissance of photoelasticity. You have wide ranging applications. I have mentioned only a few of them. And many of these applications have occurred in the last few years. Finally, photoelasticity is the technique to teach concepts of solid mechanics. Everyone is taught about beam under three-point bending. And students of soul shear stress varies parabolically. But what is not said is when it's very close to the load application point, stresses increase significantly and failure occurs in those regions. Surprisingly, this concept is not emphasized in the first level course of solid mechanics. And this is easy to illustrate by having a photoelastic equipment. Even if you don't have a photoelastic equipment, it's possible to simulate using our software P-Scope. Finally, this book would not have been possible without the gentle persuasion of Professor Shirohi. And this book launched the prime motivator for Mr. Krishna Mahesh, he was very enthusiastic for its release. And I thank our director for chairing this session and our Dean, Professor Mahesh Panchadmula for introducing Mr. Krishna Mahesh. I also thank all the panelists, Professor Aura Shirohi, Professor V. Chung Wang, Professor Michael Mello, Professor P. Venkitanarayanan, and Professor Arun Menon for giving insights on the book. I also thank all my project sponsors who have funded my research all these years. And my students, five of them, each one took one chapter of this book. And also my mechanic who made this uh, models. And my thanks also to Ms. Sujata, BP Development, Mr. Kannan Krishnamurti, Ms. Lisa Ejil, Mr. Jawahar Babu, Media Cell, Alumni and Corporate Relations, and also the attendees who have attended in large number and graced the occasion. I also thank all those who have directly or indirectly involved in this book launch function. My thanks go to all of them. Thank you very much.